holding the distinction of being the world's least successful jet airliner, the Dassault Mercure attempted to replicate the commercial performance of the Boeing 737, adopting a specification and design that was almost a like-for-like -like remake of the American short-to-medium-range model, though in the end, only 12 examples of this obscure machine would be built, but would work dutifully and without incident for over 20 years. The origin of the Dassault Mercure could be owed to its Gallic predecessor, the Sudaviachon Carvel, the world's first regional jet airliner, and one that provided reliability, speed, and comfort that made it a huge success across the globe, even penetrating the American market when a clutch of several examples entered the fleet of United Airlines. By the mid-1960s, however, the Caravelle's sales had peaked as more modern competitors arrived on the scene, namely in the form of the Douglas DC-9, Boeing 727, and the BAC-111, with the French Civil Aviation Authority eager to maintain the country's position in the international airliner market, beginning early plans with Dassault to build a replacement model of similar but more technically advanced underpinnings. The general specification for the model was to incorporate a range of 1,000 miles, as per the Caravelle, aiming to support a market for short-distance routes similar to those being operated by its British and American rivals, with 1968 seeing the new airliner conceived as a machine that was broadly similar to the BAC-111 Series 500, providing up to 120 seats and powered by twin rear-mounted Rolls-Royce Spey jet engines. However, as the demands of capacity on trunk routes within France began to increase, especially on Air Antaire's primary corridors to Nice, Bordeaux and Lyon, the 120-seat proposal was enlarged to 160 seats, though in order to accommodate the 1,000-mile range, the Rolls-Royce Spey engines were soon found to be unable to meet this minimum requirement. Another deciding factor in the size enlargement was the arrival of the Boeing 737-200 which could seat between 115 and 130 passengers, while the Douglas DC-9 could carry, at most, 127 passengers, Dassault considering that they could easily outdo both models by providing an all-economy high-density seating capacity of 162 passengers for high-demand short-haul routes, a segment of the market that neither of the two major American airliner manufacturers were covering at the time. The prospective airliner was thus modified from a rear-engine configuration to one with two engines in pods under the wings, while a low-wing monoplane and conventional tail were also adopted, the resultant aircraft featuring many positive traits, including a low structural weight, a cabin 5 cm wider than the 737, and more refined aerodynamics thanks to its enlarged wing, which was 270 square feet greater in area than the 737s, thus providing a climb rate of 3,000 feet per minute. Operation of the model could be conducted by two crew on the flight deck, a somewhat pioneering feature at the time when three crew operation was generally the norm, while a heads-up display for the pilots was also fitted, and the airliner was also provided a Category 3A Autoland system, as per the Hawker Siddeley Trident. In terms of work, the aircraft was optimized for short routes unlike the DC-9 and the Boeing 737, so much so that, despite it weighing 10,000 pounds more than the 737, while sharing the same Pratt & Whitney JT-8D engines, it could climb and fly faster than its American rival, thanks to its well-balanced design, with its 575 mile an hour top speed being 50 miles an hour faster than the 737. The airliner was also fitted, as standard, with an auxiliary power unit, or APU, in order to allow for fast turnarounds at airports that lacked suitable ground electricity infrastructure while at the same time being a vital safety feature for emergency airborne use in the event of a double engine failure. Officially launched in April 1969, the upcoming airliner was christened Mercure by 77-year-old company founder Marcel Dassault, the aircraft being so named for Mercury, the winged Roman god of commerce and travel, the French government providing 56% of the development and manufacturing costs, while Dassault contributed 14%, and the remaining 30% were covered through a shared cooperation deal between Fiat of Italy, Casa of Spain, ADAP of Belgium, the Federal Aircraft Builder EFB of Switzerland, and Canadair. Final assembly was placed in the hands of Dassault at their Merignac plant near Bordeaux, and production series aircraft were assembled at Istres, northwest of Marseille. The Dassault Mercure scheme, behind the development of Concorde between Britain and France, being the first large-scale European cooperative cost-sharing program and an innovation for civil airliner manufacture.
A full-scale mock-up of the aircraft appeared at the 1969 Paris Air Show, with Dassault forecasting an optimistic 300 units built by 1981, while the break-even for the project was set at 150 units, the expected demand for their new machine being so great that at the request of the French government, brand new factories across France were established by Dassault in Martignas, Poitiers, Céclin, and Estrez. The prototype Mercure 100, Foxtrot Whiskey Tango Charlie Charlie, made a trouble-free maiden flight from Merignac on May 28, 1971, with a three-man crew, followed on June 2nd by the aircraft's arrival at the Paris Air Show after its sixth flight and nine hours of testing. The second prototype, Foxtrot Whiskey Tango Mike Delta, joining the program on September 7, 1972, and airworthiness certification for the model was achieved on February 12, 1974. Under testing, the Dassault Mercure 100 wore Air France colors without titles, as the expectation was that the national carrier would procure a clutch of these units, though in the end, Air France would instead favor the Boeing 737-200 and had placed a request with the French government to take on 26 examples during 1974, though this was blocked by the state until the 1980s, as trade policies remained firmly in favor of the flag airline buying domestically built models. Behind Air France, Air Antaire, the French domestic carrier, was considered the natural customer for the Mercure, with the airline seeking a 150-seater model that would replace the 99-seater Caravelle Frise on its most popular routes between Paris and the main metropolitan centers of France, all of which were within 500 miles of the capital. Therefore, in September 1969, Air Antaire took out an option on five Mercure 100s, followed on January 30, 1972, by this order being increased to 10 examples, despite a determined bid by Boeing to sell them 727-200s. Sadly, while Dassault pulled out all the stops to try and get the Mercure 100 into the fleet of Air France, the airliner proved to be more expensive than the 737, while another potential customer was identified in the form of Belgian national carrier Sabina, though this company would also order 737s instead, another interest being briefly shown by some American carriers but the lack of range and high retail costs soon dispelled any possible orders in the United States. The first production series aircraft, Foxtrot Whiskey Tango Tango Alpha, made its maiden flight on July 19, 1973, with delivery of the first unit following on June 4, 1974, though due to the delivery of the initial batch of Mercures to Air on Terre being delayed by over a year, Dassault had to compensate the airline through the paying of the lease on 12 Caravelles, the final delivery of the original 10-strong order being Foxtrot Bravo Tango Tango Juliet on December 10, 1975, bringing the assembly line to a close. Service commenced on the same day as the first delivery, June 4, 1974, with the Mercure 100 replacing the regular Caravelle on the Paris Orly to Toulouse and Lyon routes, Air on Terre's units being configured in a 150-seat, six-abreast layout, the 10 production units supplied to Air on Terre being supplemented by the refurbishment of the second prototype after 10 years of storage into operational service, arriving as Foxtrot Bravo Tango Mike Delta with the domestic carrier on September 15, 1983. However, while the Mercure 100 had seen little to no interest by prospective customers, Dassault continued to propose the design for further applications as a means of reigniting support. The 1975 Paris Air Show, seeing Dassault present a potential improved version of the model, up the Mercure 200, which was 6 foot 2 inches longer, powered by two CFM 56 engines with 22,050 pounds thrust each, and a greater fuel capacity that increased the range to 2,300 miles. Such was the enthusiasm for getting the Mercure onto the sales charts that the French government was willing to provide a further loan to Dassault of 200 million francs that would be paid back by a levy on sales while beyond its existing contracts with other European aircraft builders, joint ventures with American companies were also sought as a means of getting the airliner sold in the United States. Originally, Lockheed were chosen for a possible joint venture, but ultimately withdrew based on a lack of confidence in the ability of the Mercure to sell, compounded further by their own losses being made on the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar widebody airliner and the outcomes of a bribery scandal in Japan when attempting to sell L-1011s to Olnippon Airways that cost the builder a fortune in litigation. Dassault came closer to a deal with McDonnell Douglas, as the preceding Douglas company and Sudaviachon 
had previously attempted a joint venture deal to build caravels under license at the Douglas factory in Long Beach, California. The arrangement being that Douglas would work as sales agent for caravels being sold in the Western Hemisphere, while Sudabi Ashom, based on the commercial interest of the caravel in North and South America, would allow Douglas a license to build these units domestically. Ultimately, this Franco-American partnership collapsed during 1961, as did the attempt by Dassault to arrange a similar deal with McDonnell Douglas in 1975, based on the same principles. The American builder, while briefly interested in the license building of Mercure 200s at Long Beach so as to combat the enlarged 737-200, instead opting to develop an advanced version of their existing Douglas DC-9 range in the form of the McDonnell Douglas MD-80 series of the late 1970s. Before this deal failed, however, Dassault had superseded the Mercure 200 with the Mercure ASMR, or Advanced Short Medium Range, which was presented to 55 airlines at Long Beach in October 1976, the proposal of which was supported by the second prototype, Foxtrot Bravo Tango Mike Delta, undertaking a simultaneous demonstration tour of the United States to drum up support. The Mercure ASMR was a more substantial development of the original Mercure 100 incorporating a new wing to improve its fuel efficiency and a larger fuselage section, while at the same time retaining many of the systems and engineering of the Mercure 100 to reduce costs, the Mercure ASMR being capable of carrying 174 passengers over a range of 1,709 miles, though this would have come at the cost of a top speed of only 435 miles an hour, 95 miles an hour slower than the Mercure 100. In its time, the Mercure ASMR scheme did garner the interest of Air France, who was seeking a smaller aircraft than its Boeing 727-200s in order to open up new routes and increase frequencies on some established services, while some American carriers also took a fleeting interest, though with the United States being fully saturated by Douglas and Boeing, any chance for penetration proved impossible, and with no orders, the Mercure ASMR met its end in 1977. In service, though, the Mercure 100 proved to be an economic and reliable machine to fly, presenting low operating costs and a top speed so fast that it set two speed records, the first being on a flight from Paris Orly to Lyon, a distance of 242 miles covered in 27 minutes, while the Paris to Bordeaux run of 305 miles was achieved in a mere 31 minutes. At the same time, the Dassault Mercure had a blemish-free safety record throughout its operational life and would serve dutifully with Air en Terre until the arrival of Airbus A320s during the early 1990s, the first units being withdrawn during 1992, while the last two examples would soldier on until April 29, 1995. With absolutely no resale value, both due to their age and lack of range, the 12 Dassault Mercures built were either sold off for scrap or dispatched to museums across Europe, with six examples remaining extant, two being preserved in Paris and Germany, one being used as a ground instructional airframe at Montpellier Mediterranean Airport, while two were stored at bordeaux Merignac and another at Marseille-Provence Airport. Ultimately, the failure of the Dassault Mercure can be considered in the same vein as the Hawker Siddeley Trident of Great Britain, in that due to it being so tightly designed to a limited specification, it was unable to win orders in similar numbers as the Boeing 737, BAC-111 and Douglas DC-9. For the Mercure, this airliner was simply far too case-specific for the somewhat unique population spread of France, where, in a time before the advent of the TGV high-speed train, various regional centres were only accessible from Paris efficiently by domestic airliner, despite being within short distance of the capital. For other nations with greater distances between their population centers, such as the United States, the Mercure was essentially a non-viable proposition due to its short range, being potentially useful for short hops on high-density commuter runs between New York and Chicago, or on the Eastern Shuttle service along the Atlantic seaboard, but inflexible for longer distance runs across the Midwest or the West Coast. Other problems for the Mercure came down to the fact that, aside from it presenting a shorter range than even contemporary turboprops, its large size and fuel consumption meant it was not suitable for the role of a regional jet in the same manner as the Fokker F-28 Fellowship, its Pratt & Whitney engines being relatively old, noisy and inefficient, while the potential use of Snecma General Electric CFM-56 engines 
died alongside the stillborn Mercure 200 scheme. This, combined with increased fuel prices caused by the 1973 oil crisis, as well as a devaluation of the American dollar that made the Mercure and other non-American airliners more expensive in the United States, meant the French government ultimately lost its 56% contribution to the Mercure project, while Dassault would abandon the commercial airliner market and today busies itself with the creation of successful business jets and military aircraft. Nevertheless, while the Dassault Mercure is one of the most notorious commercial failures in history, it cannot be described as a failure in terms of operation, as during its 20-year service life with Air en Terre, its reliable, safe, spacious and efficient operation between Paris and the regional centres of France was greatly appreciated by the carrier, and it proved to be something of an understated workhorse for domestic services across its Gallic homeland.